the realization is only intellectual. So I read a book or I hear a lecture or I go to a kata or whatever it may be. And I, I realize on an intellectual level, ah, yes, okay, not the body, so. Well, then there's a lot left because then you actually have to have the experience. It's one thing to read a recipe. It's another thing to actually cook food and eat it. The recipe doesn't nourish you. But it's a beautiful map to get there. But you still have to cook the food and eat it. So once I know intellectually, all right, not the body, I'm the soul. I'm awareness. I'm consciousness. I'm love. I'm truth. I'm divinity. I then start practices that actually bring me closer to it. I meditate. I do seva. I do things that clear out from me the blockages. I do things that remove from me the reinforcement of false identity, false identity, false identity, false identity. And that bring me into a, a place where I have more of an easy opportunity to access soul, spirit, tool in God's hands. Okay. Then you come to a realization that's experiential. But typically in the beginning, it doesn't necessarily last very long. Sometimes you have it. Sometimes you have an, an awakening and that's it and it's over and you're done and you're enlightened. Usually what happens is we get an extraordinary experience and maybe it lasts a moment. Maybe it lasts an hour. Maybe it lasts a week. Maybe it lasts a month. But then slowly, slowly different aspects of life start seeping in and we find that we're, we're losing, losing the hold on that. And that's okay. It happens. But it's a reminder to just increase the voltage of the practice. At least in that place, you know where you're going because you've been there, you've tasted it, you've seen it, and you're never the same afterwards. Even if life seeps in, there's always a part of you that knows, that knows where you're going. that knows what it really is about. And so you always want to get back there. You know, it's like if you grew up on fabulous home-cooked food, you go off to college, you get nothing but horrible dorm food, cannot even remember what mom's food tastes like, but there's this thing in your mind that always knows, ah, I'm going to go home on the holidays, I'm going to get mom's food, I'm going to get mom's food. But if you've never had it, you grew up on, you know, McDonald's, well, then you don't know. You don't know until you actually finally one day are blessed with an experience of beautiful home-cooked food. Then you know that none of this is ever going to suffice. So once we've had the experience, even if we find that we've lost it. There's a lot of people who come with this. Don't worry. You know where you're going. And it just means increase the voltage, increase the time of the practice. But with humility. Because a lot of times what happens once you have that experience is the ego is amazing. The ego says, ah, I'm done. I'm enlightened. Come and worship me. I'm going to start my own lineage. I'll give out my own certificates. You can be certified in my path of enlightenment. You see a lot of this. 
And the dilemma with this is that the ego always comes back and bites you in the end. And so it has to be with humility. It has to be with, oh God, thank you. Thank you for that incredible experience of the truth. Whatever I have done in ignorance, in ego, to become separate from that, please help me remove that. Please remove my ignorance, my ego. Please remove my sense that I've achieved anything. It was only by your grace. I was standing high up on the steps and Ganga decided to rise up and splash all over me. I didn't do anything. That was her grace. I didn't even know enough to go down and stand in the water. I was ignorant to think I could just stay on the steps, but she was so graceful. She rose up and splashed me on the steps. This is what happens when we have those experiences. It's not about you. It's not about something you've done to deserve it. It's that you've opened yourself. You've opened yourself to grace. And then grace has come and has splashed you, washed all over you, given you that experience. But grace requires humility. So we go into it with Humbleness, oh, oh God, please remove from me whatever it is that's now blocking me from having that experience again. Please remove from me whatever it is that has filled me up with such junk, such ego, such ignorance, such expectations, that now there's no room for you to flow anymore. Empty me so you can flow. And then, by grace, we're given a realization that doesn't dissipate, that stays with us, that, that supreme, supreme realization, God realization, moksha. Well, moksha means freedom. So when you say, what after God realization, freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from the ego. Freedom from the expectations, from the desires, so that I'm even more of a tool. This is where, when you see the enlightened masters, they are the ones serving even more. We think, oh, I'll attain enlightenment and then I'll just sit and be blissful all the time. But then you look at the enlightened masters and what are they doing all the time? Serving, 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 giving, giving, helping, helping, feeding, feeding, healing, healing. Because with that moksha, that freedom, is the freedom of all of that that thinks only about myself is that that keeps me bound to what I want, how I want it, what I need. And so we become, in that realization, vessels through which God's will flows. So every minute of our life, every minute, every moment, becomes of service. Whatever we do, it serves. without ego, without expectation, without desires, without fears, just by the nature of who we are. That's the freedom. That's the ultimate freedom. It's not freedom from the body. It's freedom in the body. If you don't have freedom in the body, when you drop the body, you'll just get another one after some time. The real freedom 
is in the body. From all of that nonsense. And then, then we become truly the divine here. You know, we began today by talking about what our scriptures tell us, and I'll conclude today by full, full, full circle back to scriptures. So we're given two very interesting teachings. In one, in many different places, many different ways, we are told, I pervade all. I am in all. Okay, so that's one teaching. God tells us in the scriptures, I am in all. Everything is pervaded by the divine. Okay? And then in another teaching we are told, whenever darkness is winning out over light, whenever adharma, unrighteousness, is winning out over dharma, over righteousness, I incarnate in form, to restore light to the darkness, to restore dharm to the adharm. Put those two teachings together and every one of us is that incarnation in form of the divine here to restore light to darkness, here to restore dharma to adharma. We just have to wake up to that fact. We have to wake up to that truth. And then, as the divine in form, we are able to do the work of the divine. <laughs>